Okay, so welcome back students. So, in the last lecture we have seen the thermodynamic properties of monoatomic gas. So, we continue from there, we derive other important properties as well and we also talk about the Gibbs entropy equation. So, in this particular lecture what we talk about are the monoatomic gases, the monoatomic gases specific heat and chemical potential because other than these properties other properties were derived in the last lecture. Then we will take some problems illustration to enhance your knowledge like what do we do with these numbers because we have all been talking about equations. So, what are the physical consideration? So, what does it mean partition function? We will see when we take some monoatomic gases. Then finally, we end up with the Gibbs entropy equation. This is an important outcome and it is actually relates the entropy of any system with possible number of states. So, first we talk about the specific heat capacity because we know the C V, the C V value is as you know is already we have studied it is the derivative of the internal energy keeping number of molecules and constraint volume. So, this is we know it is 3 by 2 n k t. So, 3 by 2 n k t you take the derivative of 3 by 2 n k t with respect to temperature. So, you will only get 3 by 2 n k. So, I am not writing that it is for you to do the derivation. And then we also talk about the partition function in respect to Helmholtz free function. So, it is minus k t into L and q. So, again if I want to talk about the assembly of atoms for example, talking about assembly of n atoms. So, this q takes the form minus k t L n of because q n by n factorial. Okay. So, this q may be a product of translational, rotational, nuclear, but overall we write small q indicating for a single atom. When it is raised to the power of n, it indicates assembly of atoms. So, then uh, it takes the form. Now, I do not want to have in this manner n factorial. So, I have to do something, some approximation. So, what I will do, I will try to expand it, I will try to expand the logarithmic term. So, if I do that, I will be getting k t n into L n q. So, n gets multiplied with k. So, k t n into L n q plus because there is a minus outside. So, when you take minus of L n n factorial and minus it becomes plus k t get multiplied with k t L n n factorial. Now, when you write this term L n n factorial does not have any meaning because you need to have some approximation. So, what they do is they do a approximation for factorial terms is called as Stirling's approximation, Stirling's approximation which says that factorial logarithmic factorial is equal to n L n minus n okay and easiest approximation is n l n sorry this is n l n actually this n l n minus n or I can also write in this manner in order to make it again a actorial term I n l n minus n l n e I can write down okay. So, approximation you should remember that factorial term can be written in terms of Stirling's approximation which is written as n l n minus n. So, now I can uh, substitute this expression into the uh, Helmets equation and then simplify if you do that you will get a equals to minus n k t l n q plus n k t l n n minus n k t l n e. So, I am just putting this n l n n minus n l n e into this l n n factorial expression that is it what I am doing. So, then I have simplified it. So, this is the overall expression. So, what I want to do is then I, if I want to write it down simplify the terms what we get is simply. So, you can take n k t as common minus n k t if you take common then this will be nothing but l n of q e by n because here is a negative term is there. So, if you take negative term it will be minus. So, this l n n factor n comes in the denominator. So, this is the expression. 
So, this expression you can write down in terms of actual variables that is q. So, if you want to write down a in terms of measurable quantities, if you want to write it down, it will be minus n k t ln, then I write down the expression for the translational partition function 2 pi m pen 2 pi m k t by h square by 3 by 2. So, this is your translational component and we assume the electronic to be representing only the ground state and nuclear partition function we assume to be unity. So, if you put that we have a v first, so this completes the entire translational part then you multiply with the ground state. into E, there will be another into E, E is there because we have a E factor outside Q by E n is this, this becomes, this is a translational part, this is your electronic part, nuclear part is assumed to be unity. So, here you do not have vibrational or rotational because you do not have a bond, chemical bond, it is a monoatomic atoms and then divided by n, this n. So, this if you substitute all the variables with it, you find to know the Helmholtz free energy. So, obviously, if n is Avogadro's number, so we will get the quantity per mole. So, that is likewise. So, if you want to measure what is the amount for 100 molecules Helmholtz free energy, you multiply by 100. So, what Avogadro numbers? It is per mole. So, joules per mole. So, now this actually brings us to the important derivation which is the Sacker tetrode equation which is nothing but the entropy expression which is derived from kinetic theory of gases also, but we arrive at the same expression when we talk about the statistical thermodynamics part. So, we know we have already derived S, S is nothing but K L n Q, Q plus K T of dou L n Q by dou T keeping the number of molecules and constraint volume. This we have already seen. Here capital Q is the assembly of atoms. So, this again if you want to write down Q, we just now found out from the previous expression Q. The expression for Q we have already obtained. So, if you substitute the value of Q here and simplify, you will get n into k into ln of 2 pi m k t by h s square to the power of 3 by 2 into volume, okay. then you will have e to the power of 5 by 2, e to the power of 5 by 2 and then the ground state degeneracy divided by number of atoms. So, this is the expression for the entropy term. So, I, what I did? I did nothing. I took the expression of Q from the previous slide and just simplified, I get this expression for entropy. Similar way chemical potential can also be obtained because chemical potential is, you know, this is we know we write it as like this mu is equal to minus k t by definition which I wrote it down in the previous lecture, it is dou L and Q by dou N keeping constant volume and temperature now, okay. So, if you do that you will get minus k t, then you put insert the value of q from the previous expression, take the natural logarithm or you can do 1 by q into dou q by dou n, either way you can do. So, if you do and keep it in terms of ln terms, you will get minus k t ln of 2 pi m k t. See these would not have any effect because these are not function of any number, these terms, the translational terms and volume, these are not based on numbers. So, you have the translational component as before here, then into ground state degeneracy by n. Now, if you notice, this is nothing but minus k t ln of q. This is the partition function assembly atom with two different or three different modes of energy, translational, nuclear and electronic. So, it is a small q. So, ultimately what you will get is minus k t ln of small q, single atom partition function q by n. So, it means the chemical potential is nothing but equal to minus k t into ln of q by n. So, if you know the single particle or single atom partition function, it may have number of 
modes of energy, it may have translational, electronic, nuclear, partition, even vibration and rotational, even it is a bond, then also this equation will hold true. So, this is what you called as small g we called as, that is the chemical potential. Okay? So, once you get q, you can get other factors also. So, then I can write a term mu of the function of temperature and pressure. This is equal to minus k t. So, what I will do? I will here I will replace V by n with k t by n. Okay. V by n I write as k t by n, I am sorry k t by p, it is not to be n, it should be k t by p. Okay. If I replace V by n, this particular V by n here, I replace by k t by p and then what will I get? I will get this expression ln. 2 pi m k t by h square. Then when I replace it by k t by p, I am introducing another term which is ln p 0, k t ln p 0. So, if I add and subtract k t ln p 0, so I will just retain the terms of p 0 in the denominator. So, I will write here k t by p 0 into plus k t ln of p by p 0. So, if you see nothing has changed only I have added minus k t ln p 0 here and you have another k t ln p 0 added up here. So, actually that actually cancels out. So, what we are having is because this is minus k t ln p 0 and here it is minus minus here it will cancel out with plus k t ln p 0 and here we have k t ln p 0. So, I have not done anything, all the terms I just introduce a standard pressure term that is p naught. So, let us see this expression what does it resemble. So, if you look up that term, this is nothing but mu of T by P. So, chemical potential can be expressed in terms of temperature and pressure which is nothing but it is mu 0 T by P 0 plus k t ln of p by p 0. Okay. We have mu 0, so some standard state chemical potential plus some contribution. Okay. So, it, this is what we are very familiar with chemistry and chemical engineering. We can express chemical potential as a function of standard state reference state chemical potential plus a contribution due to a particular temperature and pressure. So, if you can define a standard state pressure that is p naught you can then define the chemical potential in terms of temperature and pressure. So, I can then write down what is the standard temperature and pressure, it will be mu by T by P 0, it is the first term of the previous expression. So, previous expression I just write it down again. So, minus k T then in inside the bracket the same thing 2 pi m k T by h square then 3 by 2. k t p 0 and then the ground state. So, this equation, the equation which is I have written above is only applicable to an ideal gas. So, it gives a numerical value of the standard state chemical potential. So, standard state chemical potential means at a standard state of pressure p 0 at any temperature what will be the chemical potential. So, if you know that, that value you add with k t l n p by p 0, you get the chemical potential as a function of temperature and pressure. So, let us now do a problem which is the compute the thermodynamic properties of 1 mole of argon at 300 Kelvin and 1 bar. This is a problem taken from the textbook on standards book. So, the problem is you have to use these expressions which you derived just now in today's class and the previous class and find out these values and check whether these values correspond to the values obtained from the classical manner also. So, when you do this, when you do this type of problems, you need to first see what are the we given. We are given 1 mole of argon. So, it means n is Avogadro's number. So, what is temperature is 300 Kelvin and we have 1 bar. So, since it is an ideal gas, you can find out volume. So, let us first find out volume. So, the volume of this particular gas argon is nothing but nRT by P. 
So, what is this NRT? N you know is the Avogadro's number, it is 1 mole. So, let us see, we should write the units correctly. It is 1 mole. R I will write in the units of 8.314 into 10 to the power of minus 5 into this units I told you it is bar per meter cube upon mole per Kelvin into 300 Kelvin divided by 1 bar. Now you can see whether the units are correct or not. See you have mole here, you have mole here. So, mole and mole cancels out. You have bar here, you have bar here. Bar and bar also cancels out and Kelvin and Kelvin also cancels out. So, the volume you will get is in meter cube. So, you are this equation is correct. So, you should check when you solve the problem whether your units are correctly written or not. So, if you do that, it will be having the value of 0.025 meter cube. So, it means 1 mole of argon at temperature 300 Kelvin 1 bar is equivalent to 0.025 meter cube as it behaves as the ideal gas. Now, you can find out Q, what is a single particle friction function. We will use the same expression in the like in the previous two slides. We will assume the nuclear partition function to be unity and uh, electronic function partition to be equal to the ground state degeneracy unless it is not explicitly specified in the question. So, if you have Q 2 pi m k t by h square, then you have into 3 by 2 into v into a ground state. Now, this ground state again I am assuming to be unity. If it is not, nothing is given in the question, you can assume it to be unity. So, now it is the time to substitute the values. If you remember in the, I think the last lecture I have given entire table where the expressions are given in terms of molecular mass and temperature. So, we will use that expression to compute the partition function. So, that expression is nothing but I will write it down 1.88 into 10 to the power of 26 m t into 3 by 2. So, this units will be in m to the power of minus 3 meter cube inverse. Then you have the volume. So, volume you have to multiply that is into V, volume will be in 0.025. So, now substitute the values. So, it is very easier now. You have to just substitute the values of the molecular mass, the temperature and volume. So, you know the molecular mass of argon. So, you substitute it. So, you will get, I am just writing down 1.88 into 10 raised to the power of 26 into 39.8. 945. So, it is the molecular mass in grams per mole okay, into temperature is 300 Kelvin. Okay. 3 by 2, then what you have is the volume that is you have just now found out it is 0 0.025. You do that, you will get the expression as uh, do the maths, it will be 6.146 into 10 raised to the power of 30. Okay. This is the expression, this is the value. So, it will be what? It will have any units? No, it will be unitless, dimensionless number partition function. So, now this partition function you can find out A, A will be nothing but minus NKT by so N into K you can write as R, so minus RT into LN of QE by N. So, now you can substitute the value of q from the previous expression, e is exponential e, e term, n is Avogadro's number of molecules. So, if you substitute those, you will get minus 4.276 into 10 raised to the power of joules per mole. Okay. Similarly, you get chemical potential minus kt into q by n. This will be nothing but again same thing minus 4.207 into 10 to the power of 4 joules per mole. Uh, you have the value of Q, you just divide it by this. Okay. So, we move ahead 
and see other properties as well. Other what are those other properties? The specific heat, internal energy, etc. So we continue. This is the same problem actually has been continued. So it is. So entropy now. I write down entropy here. What is this entropy? Entropy is your. As I told you, it will be n k into l n of 2 pi m k t by h square 3 by 2 into v e to the power of 5 by 2 then omega I'm just writing it because omega electron is anyway it is degeneracy is unity. So, if you do that you will get simply equal to n k l n q e q e to the power of 5 by 2 into n. So, q you know already, so you can substitute the value of q from the previous slide e to the power of 5 by 2 calculate and n you know is the Avogadro's numbers. If you substitute all the value, you will get s equal to 155.01 joules per mole per Kelvin. Okay. Then u is very simple because you do not have to do anything, it is just 3 by 2 n k t by 2 because n you know, k you know, temperature you know, just substitute all the values. You can also compute by the derivative of q with respect to temperature and then multiply by k t square. You will get the same answer. You can check for the argon it will be for a 1 mole of atoms it will be, it will be, it is 3 r t by n into k is r. So, you can substitute the value of r. Here you can get the internal energy as 3.743 into 10 to the power of 3 joules per mole. Okay. You get internal energy. Now, you can get C V also. C V is very simple, just the derivative with respect to temperature, you will get 3 by 2 n k. So, essentially you just divide this by temperature. If you divide this by temperature, you will get the answer as 12.475. joules per per Kelvin. So, you know C V. Now, you can also calculate H, H is U plus P V. Okay. So, U you know from U, P also you know 1 bar, V also you know it is 0 0.025. So, it will be U plus R T, U plus R T or U by P V. Anyway, you can get the same answer. So, it will be 6.238 into 10 raised to the power of joules per mole and then C p also very similar C v plus r. So, you know C v from this expression 12.474 plus r. So, it becomes 8.314 if you add it will get the 20.792 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now, if you want to check whether we are getting the correct value of the answer of entropy from statistical thermo, you can use this expression because you know A is equal to U minus T s. Okay. So, it means S is equal to U minus A by T. Okay. Now, we have calculated U, you have calculated A, we know T. So, can we see what is S? You can substitute the values and check for yourself. 3.743 into 10 to the power of 3 minus what is A? A we have found out in the previous example 4.276 into 10 to the power of 4 joule per mole. Just write the by 300 Kelvin by 300. So, these are all in joules per mole by joules per mole. So, it will be joules per mole per Kelvin units. So, if you do the maths, you will again arrive at the same answer 155.01 joules per mole per Kelvin. So, it does not mean that you are doing statistical thermodynamics, you will get some other answer. See the classical thermodynamic equation that is the Gibbsian equation will hold true here also. So, you see I have found out using the applying the Gibbsian equation that is entropy is equal to internal energy minus temperature into entropy. 
so a equal to u means I found out s and which is exactly the same as obtained from statistical thermodynamics. So, all the equation we have derived here again again I will reiterate and repeat that is these are valid for other gases also whether it is polyatomic, diatomic, other molecules also. It is only the partition function which changes other things equations remains the same. So, we see the next problem is another problem, problem 2. Now, this problem is bit tricky in the sense the following information is again this problem is from the book of Sandler is available. The first four electronic excited states are given. Okay. So, I have written energy state 1, energy state 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, energy state 1 is the ground state. So, what is the energy state? I can write either energy or I can write relative energy. It makes the sense. Why? Because this is 0, I equal to 1 means we are assuming monoatomic gas at the lowest ground state is 0. So, whether this is relative energy or this is the absolute energy does not make any sense. This is actually the energy difference between the ground state to the ith state. Okay. So, as you see this value will change. So, in the second state the delta value this much is the energy, third state this much is the energy, fourth state this is you can say delta E 1, delta E 2, delta E 3, delta E 4. Okay. So, because the ground state is 0 and the corresponding degeneracy is given 1, 5, 3, 1, 3 all these are given okay, in electron volt. Now, we could have asked this question is all about compute the relative probability of occurrence of each of these states. So, what is the probability that the first or second or third or fourth energy state is accessible or is available when we have these temperatures 10,000 Kelvin, 20,000, 30,000 Kelvin with respect to ground state. So, I have not asked for absolute probability because my question if it would have been what is the absolute probability of locating a atom of argon let us say which is having in the third energy state. It is very difficult because if you notice we require the partition function taking care of all the states of the atom. Those all the states of the atom are not available in this particular question. So, we can always express this in terms of relative probability. So, what is the probability of occurrence of this state with respect to ground state that it asked in the question. So, for that we do not have the absolute probability, we will calculate relative probability. So, we know the expression for this E. Now, we are only talking about the translational states. So, I have probability of any state, let us suppose this is I h state is omega divided by summation of now you see these j is across all the states. So, j will then go from i equal to 1 to infinite number of states until the argon atom gets ionized. Then if it is ionized it is not in the atom state it is the ionic state. So, do we have that information? No. So, if you see the probability of occurrence of a particular state that is electronic i s state we know this we know omega of that particular state. So, this exponential term also we know, but we do not have information to compute the denominator because we do not have access to neither the degeneracies neither the energy values. Okay. So, that is why what we will do, we will try to divide this with respect to ground state. This entire expression we will try to divide with respect to ground state. In that case, what will happen is your denominator will cancel out, numerator will stay because the denominator is nothing but the partition function. So, let us see how we do that. So, it means if I can write out in this manner P i any electronic state i if I divide it by another state P any other j state. So, what I will have is simply
Now the denominator cancels out for ith and j state. Now assume j to be 0, assume j to be 0 which is the ground state. So if you do that it will be probability of any ith state with respect to the ground state. So it means the ground state I can write down as i equal to 1. Okay. If you do it 1, it means I will only have E this numerator will be the same denominator because in the ground state your electronic energy is 0. So, this term actually goes away. Okay. This term will actually grow away because it is 0 I equal to 1 you have this is energy term is 0 e to the power of minus 0 means ever overall term is 0 it is unity. So, what you are left is only 1 and this degeneracy at the ground state also 1. So, 1 into e to the power of minus 0 by k t. So, this becomes only the your numerator stays here only then it becomes numerator. So, what does it give this numerator? This numerator will give the probability of a particular state when compared to ground state. Now, you can substitute temperature at 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 for each of the states and then find out their relative probabilities. I will do it let us say for only 30,000 Kelvin, you can do for 10,000 and 20,000 yourself. So, if I talk about level, let us suppose I talk about level, level let us say 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 1 is the ground state. If it is the ground state, I just write down the expressions again 11.548, then 11.633, 11.723, and 11.828. So, you have your energy values huh, in electron volt, the energy values. And then you have also have the degeneracy omega. So, as I told you, in the ground state is 1, this is 5 this is 3, this is 1, this is 3. Now, what you do for the level 1? As you know, there is nothing. So, you have the probability obviously with respect to ground state is 1. It will be unity for at t equal to 30,000 Kelvin. With itself, with itself is unity. So, you have both numerator and denominator to be the same. So, it is unity. So, omega is 1, this is 0. So, it is 1. The probability is 1. Now, what will the probability? You have to do 11.548 into this exponential term divided by k and put T as 30,000 Kelvin multiplied by the corresponding degeneracy that is 5. Then do the mathematics, you will find the relative probability to be close to around 5.73 10 to the power of minus 2. In the similar manner, you will see what? What will you get? Will the probability increase or decrease? it will increase because as you get higher and higher excited state with temperature, the probability will increase. So, it increases 3.32 to 10 to the power of minus 2, then 1.071 to 10 to the power of minus 2, 3.082. So, surprisingly if you see the probabilities are not showing any uh, trend, but you know what will happen if I keep on doing like this finally, you will get a state where the probability of excited state is unity as compared to ground state. This will happen when the atom actually ionizes. If it ionizes, then you will see you have two different atomic state. One is the argon which is and then you have the electron. So, now you may ask even if I because this energy of ionization for argon atom is simply 15.76 electron volt. So, looking at this particular high degree of ionization energy. So, this probability should have been much more higher, it should be close to unity, but it is not like that. It is not close to unity, it is very less. Why is that so? Because as you go here, as you go keep on going downside, the possibility that the argon is split into an argon ion and an electron. So, it means initially we are only considering the translational states of a single atom. Now, you have a translational states of argon ion plus an electron both. 
so your number of accessible states has increased manifold times. In addition to that, it has the electronic states accessible for both the ion as well as for the electron. Due to this, this probability is even though the energies are closer and closer to the ionization energy, it is not close to 1, but it is way away from unity. So, that is the reason because the degeneracies of both this ion as well as this electron, this part that is omega is very, very large. So, even though the energy value is large, still it is multiplied by the large value of degeneracy to make or pull down the probability to a lower value. That is the reason you do not see this probability increase with energy levels. So, I hope I could uh, make you understand that there are different states of argon ion and electron. This is what we called as ionization. So, after this we go to the, the Gibbs entropy equation that this is important because this relates entropy to the probability of occurrence of possible states. So, it means that if there are number of states accessible to a particular atom, which state it can take? So, it is a probability again. So, I mean what are the states it has access to? That information can be stored in terms of entropy. So, let us write down again the Gibbs entropy equation. So, Gibbs entropy equation we already derived earlier, it is K into ln Q plus T dou ln Q by dou T keeping N and the constant value. So, this is your Gibbs entropy equation and let us suppose what is the probability of locating a particular microstate with energy E, exactly with the energy E. This is nothing but E to the power of minus E by k t upon q, which is a function of n v t. Now, you see I have not written any degeneracy here because I am talking about that exact that particular configuration, that microstate. What is the probability? So, it means I know all the microstates, I do a summation, get the partition function. In the numerator, it is only that exponential part of that particular energy of microstate. So, this is the expression of the probability. Like this, there may be many such microstates having the same energy, but we are talking about a particular microstate. It means we are talking about a particular arrangement of atom. So, this is the expression, this we have studied already. Now, let us do some mathematics and see if I can just make sure that I can write this Q in terms of this energy. So, what I will do, I will just reduce this derivative term dou ln Q by dou T I write like this 1 by Q and open up this q. What is this q? Let us see what is this q. So, if I want to write down q, it will become dou of q. I will write down in terms of exponential e to the power of minus e j by k t. All the states, j is all the states of the atom by dou of t by n by v. Okay. So, it means I reduce this expression to 1 by q summation of e to the power of minus e j by k t into e j by k t square. Now, what is this expression? This is nothing but u by k t square, is not it? This is nothing then becomes u by k t square because dou ln q by dou q is equal to u by k t square according to definition. So, it means when I do a derivative of this summation term with respect to temperature, it reduces to this expression. So, this expression divided by the partition function is becomes u by k t square. So, let us see this is an important outcome, this is equation 1. So, let us continue. So, let us now write this expression. Now, summation across all the states, possible states j is equal to p n v e j ln of p n v e j j. So, let us see what is the value if I multiply the probabilities into their logarithmic values. If you do the summation of this term, we have to write the expression. So, let us write down the expressions for the individual terms. We will get 
summation across all the states of j e to the power of minus k t by l n of e to the power of minus e j upon k t minus l n q function of n v and t bracket closes divided by q okay this is again a function of what how does this come about so see you have you have the probability what is this probability because i told you the probability is e to the power of minus e j by k t okay so this is then multiplied by this ln e so you have ln q here and you have q at the bottom because this p value is what it is nothing but the exponential term divided by the partition function so i am writing the probability as exponential term divided by the partition function okay here also exponential term divided by the partition function so then i take a log so log of that exponential term minus log of the partition function so this ln p expression is equal to this expression so if i want to make some distinction so it is this expression so because ln of i just want to reiterate that ln of ln p of so you see this expression ln of p n v a j so this is the expression for this term first term ln of then this entire term this entire term if i apply logarithmic ln of e eij minus ln q divided by q because of this term so now i simplify this further so if i simplify it further what i will do i will multiply it i will just open the brackets okay so if i open the bracket what i will do is so ln p n v e j into ln of p n v e j is equal to i will write here summation all the states then e to the power of minus e j by k t since it is logarithmic so it becomes only minus e j e j upon k t then ok and this is minus ln q upon q ok now open the brackets again so if you open the brackets again you will get minus 1 by k t into summation across all the states j e j by the k t is there so k t i have taken outside so it will be e j into e to the power of minus e j by k t by q ok then if i put this bracket here because q is already there and you have ln q is also already there so if i write down here e to the power of minus e j by k t for the second term i am writing out second term by k t because k t is already outside is taken outside so it will be only multiplied by ln q by q now if you notice carefully when this these two terms when it is operated on this summation term this summation term takes the value of q okay this will take the value of q so it means a minus 1 upon k t summation of j e j into e to the power of minus e j by k t let it be like this minus if i operate on this minus 1 by k t if i operate on this so it will be summation of e to the power of minus e j upon k t by q into l n q so this takes a form minus 1 upon k t summation so this e j into e minus to the power of exponential e j upon k t just now i have referred in the previous slide it is nothing but u by k t square because you see u by k t square is what i am just write it here so that you remember u by k t square dou ln q by dou t is equal to 1 upon q summation of 
e to the power of minus e j upon k t into e j by k t square. Summation closed. So, if you see this expression, we and then this expression, you compare this expression. So, you have a k t here. So, need to multiply with t. So, if you multiply by t, so this is u by k t square, this become u by k t only. So, this entire terms then becomes u by k t. This becomes minus u by k t because one temperature term goes into this term to make it u by k t. Then what about this minus? Then this term then all cancels out. So, this is become only L and Q because this has become Q. So, Q and Q cancels out, Q and Q will cancel out. If Q and Q cancel out, you have only L and Q here. So, it will become only L and Q here. Okay? So, if this becomes only L and Q, I will write it down properly then what happens here. Again, I write minus u by kt in terms of dou L and t by dou t. So, it become t into minus t into dou L and Q by dou t minus L and Q. This is the expression, which is exactly the same expression what we got from the entropy, because this is what we know, this is entropy only. So, if you take negative sign outside, it becomes T L dou L and Q plus L and Q, which is the entropy equation. So, from probability, we can also obtain the expression of entropy. So, I can write down S equal to K of L and Q plus T dou L and Q by dou T of N by V is nothing but minus K of summation P of N V E J into L N of P of N V E J. So, it means if you want to calculate the entropy and if you know the number of states, you just need to know the probability of each of these states. So, multiply the probability of that state and then into its natural logarithm and sum across all the states to get the entropy. Okay? So, this is how we have actually arrived from a probability to the entropy expression. So, if I want to write down again that expression here. So, S is equal to let us say S. S will be minus K of summation of P of N V E J into L N of P of E j. Okay. So, if suppose there are uh, let us say only a single state, single state so only one. So, what is the probability? It is one unity. So, L n p is L n 1 is 0. So, for a single state s is 0 okay. that and that is true. So, if that is actually the third law of thermodynamics. So, if there are only a single state perfect crystalline medium at 0 Kelvin you have only a single accessible state. So, entropy is 0. Now, you keep on increasing number of states. Let us suppose two states. If there are two possible states, the entropy becomes minus k into 0 0.5 ln of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 ln of 0 0.5. Now, see the expression answer will be close to 0.693 k. So, it is positive. So, entropy increases as the number of several states increases. This is one state, this is second state. This is the first case, the second case. Now, let us say we keep on increasing and let us say we say it is for three states, three accessible states. So, S will be minus k into 1 by 3 ln 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 ln of 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 ln of 1 by 3. Three possible states means three are equally probable. So, it means the probability is 1 by 3. Two possible states mean two are equally probable, probability is 1 by 2. So, this will become equal to 1.0986 k. See the incre entropy increases. As the possible states, possible states increases, the entropy also increases, which is also true from thermodynamics. As the number of states increases, number of configuration increases, your entropy also increases. Like that, if you go towards 10 states, 
your entropy will be further higher. So, it will be minus. So, if I do not want to write the uh, probabilities again, so it will be 2.303 Kelvin. So, again it increases. So, this one keeps on increases the entropy, which is true. As the number of accessible states increases, your values will be also increasing. So, so, what have we learned from this given entropy equation? As the number of states in a system increases, the level of uncertainty regarding which state the system occupies also increases. This increase in uncertainty is reflected in the entropy of the system, which is defined in terms of probability. A statistical interpretation of entropy suggests that the function is connected to the level of uncertainty regarding our knowledge about the state of the system. So, these are the important three conclusions from the Gibbs entropy equation when they are defined in terms of probability. More the number of possible states, more will be the entropy. Lesser the number of states, lesser will be the entropy because lesser, higher will be the probability. With this, I think I will come to the end of this conclusion of this particular lecture. So, again you go through this Sandler's book to see and observe the two problems and also the derivation of the Gibbs entropy equation in terms of probability. Thank you.